wasabi wallet, unfairly private. What is up everyone? I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions and this is your daily session. Hodl the Bitcoin. Before we dive in, of course, shout out to sponsors of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin for a variety of different services. And I've been using and working with these guys for well over a year. Uh, I love it. Um, in my instance, the first thing I ever used of theirs was a Bitcoin backed loan. I was in a pinch, needed dollars, and I didn't want to sell my Bitcoin because that's a taxable event. And I was worried about having to buy back in at a higher price point. So I was able to deposit my Bitcoin get a loan to my bank account within 24 hours and when i paid that back well hey i got back the exact same amount of bitcoin they've got two other products that they have here they have bitcoin and usdc savings accounts they just upped the interest rates on these to a maximum of 11.7 percent and they've got their b2x offering which uses the same loan mechanism to buy you more bitcoin effectively doubling your bitcoin on the spot you want to check them out there's a link in the show notes down below and you if you opt to get a loan through them uh using that link well you'll be helping out the show but more importantly you'll get 50 bucks worth of bitcoin for free so check them out and secondly we have We have Crypto Cloaks. Have you heard of these guys? They are absolutely awesome. And they make the coolest fucking Bitcoin swag out there. They have uh, sleeves for your hardware wallets. They have these cool things. The Bitcoin grenade here, you can store open dimes in them. If you don't have open dimes, what are you doing? They're great for peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin transactions. They have node cases. They have just about everything that you want and they keep on pumping out more stuff these are awesome dudes they love bitcoin and they got together with a bunch of 3d printers and just started pumping out the awesome swag check them out uh one of the things that you will see soon on the shelves behind me is the honey badger uh i guess it's a statue but it also has a shelving unit or a, a, a like a a little drawer in it and you can store your hardware wallets in there for easy access so i'm very excited to get going with that check them out and follow them on twitter they are awesome on twitter at crypto cloaks um crypto cloak guys thank you for joining the show and finally of course we have the kobo vault i have done a an in-depth tutorial on the kobo vault it is 100% air gapped, meaning you never plug it into your computer, which means that your private keys are not at risk. The keys to your money are not at risk because they're never connected to the internet. You communicate entirely through QR codes, just scanning and approving. Um, and the other thing that I really love about these guys, other than the secure element, uh, is that they have interoperability with some of my favorite wallets. You can do Bitcoin Core, you can do Electrum on desktop, you can do Wasabi Wallet. Obviously, I love Wasabi Wallet and Blue Wallet on mobile. It's beautiful. My favorite interfaces. Of course, they've got their own dedicated app. But for me, I I love my my wallets that I'm using and using the Kobo with it has been an absolute dream. So do check them out. Um, and they're doing a giveaway. So heads up, free shit coming your way. Okay. For every show, every show for the next three months they will be giving away one of these bad boys the kobo tablet plus so this is uh i'll just read a little bit of it um compared to the kobo tablet the kobo tablet plus is redesigned with a slot for each letter tile for your backup phrase so your backup of your wallet as opposed to a slot for every four even the 304 grade steel uh, even if the 304 grade steel that it's made of gets warped the letter tiles won't budge from their frame and they built this product specifically because jameson lop tested out a lot of these seed storage uh, devices out there and they found that the old version not as secure from warping and stuff like that the the letters could come loose they completely redesigned that specifically because of that test and they did what the market demanded so if you want one of these what do you have to do 
You got to be on Twitter and you got to retweet today's show with a reason of why you want the Kobo Tablet Plus. Be sure to tag myself. Obviously, I'll see it if you retweet, but also tag uh, Kobo in there. You can look them up on Twitter and find them. But uh, yeah, retweet that show out. Let me know why you want this. I will be randomly picking somebody who does that every single time I air a show for the next three months. So get on top of it. Everybody loves free shit. Uh, let's move into the news. So Bitcoin price has dropped. We were skirting around the 12K range. We went up a little bit above it the other day, but we had like a drop of 4% or more at this point. Um, we actually dropped like 800 something dollars. We were around the 11,100 and something dollar range, but we've come back up since then. In fact, while recording this, we're around 11.3, getting close to 11.4. So we have bounced off this. And when you zoom out, really not that scary, guys. It's Bitcoin being Bitcoin. It's gonna oscillate quite a bit. But let's look a little bit deeper here. Again, there was a rejection uh, at 12K resistance. It's gonna take a little bit to get above that. Once we clear that, it, it could be a, a sizable move. So just buy a hat and hold on for that moment. Um, anyways, just a few points about that. Bitcoin is facing selling pressure at press time, having failed to move above a long held resistance level on Tuesday previously. Um, the leading cryptocurrency is currently trading at around 11.390. Again, it's I just see it's now over 11.4, uh, representing roughly a 4% decline. Um, the sell-off coincided with a report that South Korean authorities have seized BitHum, one of the country's biggest cryptocurrency exchanges by trading volume. Um, it says here, we are seeing a significant unwinding of leverage positions in Bitcoin and major altcoins uh, on the BitHum news. That's from Matthew Dibb, co-founder of Stack, a provider of cryptocurrency trackers and index funds. Um, now, the other thing here is there's also been some strength in the US dollar and Bitcoin has been kind of like an inverse correlation relationship with uh, the strength of the US dollar as of late. but. I wouldn't give too much credence to that. Everybody said that it was it was correlating with the S&P and that was a narrative for a while. Bitcoin is being Bitcoin. At some point, it's going to correlate with everything. That doesn't mean there's an actual causation there. So um, I would zoom out and look at the bigger picture here. Um, as we said, again, police reportedly raid the headquarters of BitHum, South Korea's largest exchange just a few points here uh newspaper in seoul reported wednesday that officers from the seoul metropolitan police agency's intelligent crime investigation unit had raided bithum's headquarters located in the capital's central gangnam district the police uh, action was apparently linked to a $25 million token sale hosted by BitHum and a proposed acquisition by a single Singapore platform um, that never materialized. Per a report from the news, some investors said they lost millions participating in the sale. So uh, not great for BitHum. Um, but again, these these exchange failures are going to continue to happen and the market will continue to shrug them off. Uh, I'm again skeptical that this is actually a, a cause of the Bitcoin self, maybe partly f like localized there. But uh, honestly, does does the market really care if stuff like this happens? People know that a, a single exchange in in a single country is not Bitcoin failing. So I'm, I'm kind of dismissive of the causality linked here in um, in the previous article. Anyways, let's move on here. Uh, now, Bitcoin, I guess we're not really moving on. This is just more positive price move. Bitcoin is mirroring gains of past halvings, which is suggesting a $41,000 price within this year, like before year end. Um, there's a lot of people that are very bullish. I just listened to a podcast from the Swan Signal, Swan Bitcoin, um, excellent, with Andy Edstrom, uh, author of Why Buy Bitcoin, and with Preston Pish. And if you haven't heard it yet, listen to it. These guys are bullish as hell. Um, and Preston, who's a genius when it comes to this kind of thing, is saying he would be very surprised not to see Bitcoin uh, going above previous all-time highs by Christmas. Um, that would be very exciting. Again, anything can happen, but man, 
I'm I'm feeling the FOMO, I've got to say. Uh, anyways, let's read a little bit further on. Performance remains on track, the stock to flow model shows, as creator plan B tells investors, patience is a virtue. Uh, Bitcoin is charting its way directly between the previous two block subsidy halvings that sent its price an order of magnitude higher. In a tweet on September 2nd, Plan B, creator of the stock to flow model, told investors to be patient when it comes to price appreciation. Uh, despite bouncing near $11,000 support today, Bitcoin has performed exactly as expected on monthly timeframes since the last halving event in May. Reluctance to break the 12000 uh, level has characterized price action since, but progress on the monthly chart uh, is plain to see. And Plan B, I'm going to uh, just go to his tweet here bring it up. Sorry, my browser is slow because I have so many tabs going. Here we go. Reminder, we are still early, only four months after Bitcoin 2020 having nicely between the 2012 and 2016 paths. Patience is a virtue. This from plan B. And so what we see charting here in the various colors, we see the having uh, would be the starting point of this chart that I'm looking at. We see a sharp um, incline from the 2012 to 2016 kind of Bitcoin epoch between those cuts and issuance. Um, now, 2012 had two massive rallies. They had one from single digits up to around 200 and something dollars. And they had one from, uh, again, double digits all the way up to around $1,200 at the absolute peak, uh, which represented like a 9,000% increase. Now, the percentage increase was not as crazy uh, in the 2016 to 2020 period, but, 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 um, dollar wise, it represented a massive increase, uh, from around at the time of the having, I think it was around six or $700 to around $20,000, which was, uh, I'm going to say eyeballing it here. I mean, it was over 2000% from the having, um, but, I think probably 22, 2300%, which is insane in a matter of around 18 months. Okay. Um, now, uh, furthermore to this article, uh, there was uh, somebody else who chimed in here. Um, so over the weekend, meanwhile, another chart painted an even more bullish outlook for Bitcoin. Uh, taken Meg's having as a starting point, data analysis resources, uh, eCoinometrics uh, e produced a price target of $41,000 for the end of this year. Uh, they just said simply looking solid and added this chart. Let me bring it up. Let's hope my browser isn't slow as hell. Damn you, Chrome. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this, what they're doing here is they're charting using averages uh, from the last couple halvings, average price movements. So um, the tweet here says, Bitcoin after the halving, August 31st, 2020, 111 days after the third halving is at 11,732. Of course, we're down from that a little bit, uh, but uh, average growth after the previous halvings, that's what the kind of the middle line here is. And then it shows our current trajectory so far. Uh, so it says third having we are here at 117 roughly um, and they plot out a few points one is December 31st 2020 they're projecting somewhere in the ballpark of $41,000 by mid April 2021 they're projecting $100,000 and by mid May 2021 they're projecting $387,000 now this is a lot it does also somewhat line up with what plan B was projecting where he says, my, my kind of baseline for this having, uh, should it kind of fall into his stock to flow cross asset model that he put together, if that model holds relatively well, 288,000 would be kind of like the baseline and then it could overshoot that by up to double which would kind of fall in line to their projections here on this from the ecoinometrics uh, projections that they've got going um now will this happen again take it with a grain of salt i'm i'm super excited for this next year but i'm also trying not to get so excited and plan my life around it um so take it with a grain of salt if you're bullish on bitcoin 
then uh, you know, tread carefully. I'm I'm excited about it. I'm trying to, you know, maintain <laughs> some degree of being humble. But uh, yeah, it it could be a very big year. But just know that all of this could go out the window um, at the drop of a hat. So just be cautious. Either way, exciting times ahead. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's move on. The, a major European stock exchange lists the first Bitcoin product. So a little bit from here. Um, I'm going to butcher this name. <laughs> Weiner Bors. I want to say Wiener, but I think it's Weiner. Weiner Bors, one of the largest central European based stock exchanges today, listed its first cryptocurrency product. While this appears like a strong adoption signal, the article here uh, makes the argument these exchange traded products might also be the latest event in a growing trend that ultimately devalues cryptocurrency, some regional experts say. So moving on here, it says issued by Swiss based fintech firm 21 shares AG, this single asset product will be uh, will trade under the ticker symbol ABTC. Uh, it seeks to track both the investment results of Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market cap and the second place contender Ethereum. Uh, so they will the clients of Weiner Bors will now be able to get exposure to cryptocurrency from a regulated trading platform without having to directly buy the cryptocurrency on their own. Now, I wanted to highlight something said further down in the article. Uh, it says, basically, it's a security product to own non-custodial, in brackets, Coinbase, they'd be the custodian, Bitcoin. Um, that means that you now have three intermediaries, although the basic idea um, is to empower the individual to eliminate in intermediaries and all those financial constructs that led to the banking crisis in 2008. Uh, now, the point is that the creation of ETPs could potentially lead cryptocurrency into the same traditional finance mismanagement that Bitcoin was purportedly created to prevent. Now, I have a bit of uh, a pushback to this idea. Now, could it lead to the same mismanagement? 100% um, traditional finance isn't going to behave any differently, at least in my view, in the short term regarding whether it be Bitcoin and actual hard money that can't be created uh, or can't be inflated. However, this time around, if somebody does something irresponsible and it doesn't go their way, there is no lender of last resort to get them out of it. You can't print more Bitcoin just because you made a bad call and over leveraged yourself to hell. Um, and so while Bitcoin doesn't prevent these derivative products and rehypothecation built on top of it, what it does do is it holds people accountable when they over leverage themselves and make a bad call. If you make that bad call, too bad there's only a certain amount of Bitcoin. And I think we're going to see Bitcoin as more of like a Trojan horse in the traditional finance industry where people that are used to getting away with bloody murder will now be held accountable and they won't realize it until their time has come. And I'm excited for that moment. I don't I know about you. Um, Speaking of craziness uh, and traditional finance being insane, uh, what else is insane is DeFi. I'm going to keep talking about DeFi because I think it's going to be like the absolute center for my popcorn consumption this next 18 months because it is so irrational. It's insane. So uh, this article from Masari is talking about tokenized Bitcoin. And so what is tokenized Bitcoin? It's basically Bitcoin held with a cust uh, custodian and a token issued representing that Bitcoin. So it's not actual Bitcoin. It's a promise of getting Bitcoin later. So reading a little bit here, crypto analytics firm Misari estimates that $500 million worth of Bitcoin has been tokenized on the Ethereum network for use in decentralized finance protocols. The firm's latest report points out, however, that this figure represents just 0.3% of Bitcoin's $216 billion market cap, meaning there is ample opportunity for projects that facilitate the migration of Bitcoin onto Ethereum to capture significant value. And again, the term migrate Bitcoin onto Ethereum, nothing is actually migrating onto Ethereum. Somebody's holding that Bitcoin and then giving you a token. 
Okay, just to be clear. Anyways, according to DeFi Pulse, popular Bitcoin tokenization protocols, Wrapped Bitcoin or WBTC and RenVM are the ninth and 10th largest DeFi projects by locked funds with 453 million and 234, uh, 232.4 million respectively. Ren has seen an explosion in use over the past month with value of funds locked in the protocol gaining nearly 470% from 40.9 million at the start of August. WBTC also absorbed 274 million in capital in the last month, increasing the value of its locked funds by 157%. During August, the number of Bitcoin being tokenized via WBTC briefly exceeded the rate at which new Bitcoin are mined, signposting booming demand for Bitcoin in the DeFi space. And again, as I was talking about traditional finance and people allocating funds and, and being irresponsible with them, the same fallout will come to people in DeFi that put Bitcoin into it and maybe are trusting either a centralized entity to hold those funds or some sort of a smart contract to lock them up. Um, if either of those fail, there's no extra Bitcoin coming your way to make you whole. Uh, so please, please beware. And we're going to keep talking about this craziness um, because this is more than just Bitcoin tokenized on Ethereum. Um, there is yield farming going on, which is essentially locking up some sort of capital, whether it be Bitcoin or Ether, um, and being paid out interest in some sort of a newly issued token, which supposedly has value, but has dick all for liquidity. One such one is called Sushi. <laughs> Yes. Um, okay. So and so, what happened here? Apparently, twenty-seven million dollars worth of sushi funds could disappear at the drop of a hat, or specifically a chef's hat. And we'll see what that means in a minute. Reading here, it says from Coin Telegraph, data analyst and partner at Cinnamon. Oh man, Cinnamon Chain. Oh God, uh, Ventures. Sorry for that. Adam Cochran took a deep dive into the administrative wallet of Sushi Swap, a protocol that has gained a lot of traction and one billion dollars of liquidity in the past few days. A billion dollars in a few days of existence. Moving on, uh, the analysis of Uniswap clone. Uh, the Uniswap clone emerged from a revelation by Twitter that uh, user Sasa that the deployer wallet or the person issuing the tokens has around $27 million of Sushi tokens, which could be dumped on the uh, into the pool at a moment's notice. Cochran said that he first looked at the smart contract. He assumed that de the developer fund was going to a wallet that was locked by government's governance vote or time lock or something like that. Definitely not the case. Uh, his analysis revealed that it actually is just a generic wallet that the anonymous sushi, so sushi swap administrator or the person named as Chef Nomi, uh, as he's known on Twitter, or she, I don't know, uh, has the cryptographic keys for. This means that investors could potentially be dumped on without warning. Um, so again, like a lot of these protocols are, are launching with almost no audit and people are just dumping millions of dollars into them. It is so much like the ICO craze of 2017. I can't believe my eyes. Um, and uh, furthermore, there's another one called, what is it called? It's, it's kimchi. The people are just slapping stupid names on these things and people are buying them. It's it. They're like forking the protocols. It's like when Bitcoin cash forked and people thought it was valuable and then Bitcoin gold forked and people thought it was valuable. And then eventually the, the fad faded and everybody realized none of it was valuable. <laughs> so anyways, reading here, if you haven't heard of kimchi, the DeFi farming token, that's because it didn't exist yesterday. <laughs> Today, reportedly it, it reportedly locked in $500 million in value from staking before tumbling down to a mere $150 million or so. Its growth trajectory mirrors other recent DeFi projects, notably Yam, the token that surged past $150 in just a couple of days before crashing down to zero <laughs> in a not so sweet potato within 24 hours. Uh, yeah, so something that didn't exist yesterday briefly had half a billion dollars pumped into it worth of liquidity in a 24 hour period and then dropped by two thirds. 
again, if you play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes. Uh, again, if, if you're dabbling in DeFi, sweet Lord, just please be careful. Okay. Those of you, I'm going to, please listen. Let me cradle your hands, your head in my hands for a second. Um, please listen. If you're dabbling in this stuff and you must, if, if this is like, uh, it's eating away at you just to not be involved in this. I beg of you, take a certain amount of Bitcoin, hopefully a sizable amount of, of the cryptocurrency that you own. Sit it in Bitcoin and just dollar cost average into that and ignore the noise with those funds. Those never leave this like pre-allocated long-term set of funds, set of sats that you just hold on to for a long time decades possibly and then you have your your other money that goes into crap like this again i'm not touching this shit but if you are please treat it as gambling because that is what it is um i know i know people see other people making st stupid amounts of money um but it can just as easily burn you incredibly incredibly bad so exercise caution and realize that it is indeed gambling um, and if you do it, treat it like, treat it like a slot machine. You're not expecting much out of it and you definitely wouldn't be putting your life savings into it. Uh, last couple things to touch on, uh, <laughs> adult content platform Pornhub announced today that it began accepting Bitcoin and Litecoin as payment methods for its premium subscription service. Quote here, to further expand our cryptocurrency options for Pornhub Premium, we're excited to announce that we accept Bitcoin and Litecoin as payment methods, the platform tweeted. This is not the first time Pornhub penetrated. <laughs> oh man, this writer. The first time Pornhub has penetrated the crypto space. Back in April 2018, the platform began accepting Verge, a rebranded version of Dogecoin's hard fork Dogecoin Dark, announcing that the future has come. Let's move on. <laughs> Roger Bear to Bitcoin ABC. Stick a fork in it. You're done. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, if you didn't know, it's forking again. So history lesson. Bitcoin was Bitcoin for a long time. Pe some people, a small number of people wanted bigger blocks and didn't see the problem inherent in constantly bumping up block size in that you wouldn't be able to run a node eventually. It would become prohibitively... Uh, difficult to do so because of latency issues and and uh, upload and download times and so on and so forth. Besides the fact, what resulted in that is is a group of people uh, essentially created an altcoin called Bitcoin Cash. They took the existing user balances and duplicated them and said, if you have Bitcoin, you now have the same number of Bitcoin Cash, which they said was the real Bitcoin. The market has since decided it was indeed not the real Bitcoin. I think it's around 3% of a Bitcoin now. Um, but also throughout that, there was more infighting. I guess it's just in the blood of people that were uh, following this fork. There was more infighting and another split was caused and uh, Bitcoin Cash um, was again duplicated into something called Bitcoin SV, which was spearheaded by Roger Ver. Uh, no, what am I saying? Roger Ver, one and the same, whatever. Roger Ver is the Bitcoin Cash cap and you had Craig Wright, the imposter Satoshi Nakamoto that was heading up Bitcoin SV or Satoshi's vision. Well, now Bitcoin Cash, the one with Red Rivera, is once again forking. And, and this is around uh, the idea that they want to fund developers, not Red Rivera himself, but the other people that are forking off to create another coin. Um, they want to fund de developers by every time a miner mines a block, 8% of that revenue would go to a developer fund, which sounds a lot to me like tax. So I'm actually kind of with Roger on this one in that that sounds like a terrible idea. Um, so anyways, here's, here's what it says a little bit in this article. Uh, so Bitcoin ABC... Um, the dispute over ABC's Coinbase rule would divert 8% of all newly mined Bitcoin cash to a development fund uh, come November. Vera's tweet came in response to Bitcoin ABC uploading its latest 
0.22.1 release, which will activate the Coinbase rule on November 15th. So no matter what, November 15th, there's gonna be two different coins here. Um, now there, again, people were saying, uh, yeah, again, Roger's tweet said, Bitcoin ABC um, and Dedelnix, anyways, he's a developer with them, uh, have announced that they are forking away from Bitcoin Cash on November 15th. We wish them good luck and with their new coin uh, and thank them for the free airdrop to all BCH holders. Now, Roger here is assuming that he's going to maintain the mantle of the, the name Bitcoin Cash, where, whereas Bitcoin ABC people are forking off are saying that they're the real Bitcoin Cash it's it's a mess anyways uh it'll be interesting and again i guess another source uh of my soon to be popcorn dependency anyways guys i'm gonna wrap it up there thank you so much for watching and or listening if you're here on youtube please do remember to hit like subscribe and share those things really really do help so please do them can't stress it enough. Now, if you want to help the show in another way, you can hit up the sponsors that I mentioned down below. That was Leaden. That was Crypto Cloaks. That was Kobo. And remember, you can retweet for that chance to win. And if you're checking out any of those services and you like what you see, let them know that you heard about them from me because, again, that helps the show too. And if you really loved what you saw, you can always drip me, drop me, drip me, drop me, a Bitcoin Lightning Network tip at my tippin.me page. That is tippin.me. T I P P I N dot me slash at BTC sessions. And with that, I'm out. Have yourselves a wonderful evening, a wonderful day, wherever you are. And I will see you next time for your daily session.